Over 33,000 people have fled Haiti's capital in the last two weeks as gangs continue to attack homes and government buildings. This is video shared by a Canadian who was sheltering from that violence. You can hear the gunshots in the background. The Canadian government says they're continuing to monitor the situation there. They say the Canadian Armed Forces are now working with the embassy in Haiti to assist with contingency planning. Officials are asking Canadian citizens in Haiti to contact Global Affairs and discuss their situation if they wish to leave. Now, we connected with David Rochelot earlier this month. He found himself trapped in Haiti after he was going there for a short-term contract. Now, yesterday, he managed to get home, but he says Canadian authorities didn't have anything to do with his safe return. It was actually a private company that helped him get out. He now joins us from Quebec, and he is safe back at home. Uh, glad to talk to you. I know what a harrowing situation this has been for you. David, you are finally home now. Tell us what that trip was like to get there. Um, well, it was well, stressful. Stressful and worrisome because we had both three false depart uh, departure notices. You know, they say, okay, the helicopter's here. They moved it from one, we were at one safe house, moved down to a hotel, and then we were supposed to transfer onto the helicopter, and that was canceled at the last moment. The next day, they said, okay, we're leaving at 1.30. Uh, or no, I think it was 3. We got ready. We're standing by the... We had some armored cars, so escort us down to the uh, takeoff pad. And that was canceled at the last moment. And then the third time, that was good. We, they took us down, escorted us down to the uh, golf course. And they had the helicopter land there, and we finally got out. But it was, you know... Okay, so just to, to, to recap this, you had to have like a, a, an armed uh, motorcade essentially in front of you to make sure that the coast was clear and then get yes, to this yes. uh, golf course that we're seeing right now. Yes, that's it, yes. Okay, so we're seeing, <clears throat> excuse me, we're seeing that helicopter footage. Uh, how did you feel when you got on that helicopter in that moment that you stepped onto it and realized that you're finally getting out? <laughs> well, sort of elated and excited and it really had old experience because I was in helicopter rides when I was in the Army. So, you know, for me, that was not business as usual, but that wasn't, you know, I, I've been in helicopters before. For me, it was normal. But just the relief of getting, getting out was also there too, you know. Did the Canadian government help you in any way? None whatsoever. The only we used to get email every second day and say, "Okay, uh, please stay sheltered in place. If you have you need us, contact us at one eight hundred. My my friend, he tried to contact them, but he, he just got a, a automatic reply on the uh, on the email. There's no helpful answers. What help do you wish you had uh, been given by the Canadian government when you were in Haiti? Well, just the, the same service we got to evacuate, but maybe through the Canadian government. You know, I, I've been in the Army. I know how it works. I know what equipment we have. We have the means to bring helicopters in and get ground coordination. Maybe not the, the ground security. That would, would have been left to the Haitian, not the government, but private enterprise. That was a private enterprise that's... You know, they can escort us to a safe site and then a Canadian helicopter could come in instead of a private one. Because I, I shouldn't mention the price, but it was in the double digits, thousands, just to get me out. Now, sure, a military helicopter maybe cost the same, but, you know, why couldn't we order it? Why doesn't a team in Haiti or in every country? In every country where there's Canadian embassy, there should be an emergency evacuation plan, you know. Where can we land helicopters? I know we're down there, there's just not one place, there's different places. We've seen the diplomats, they were about maybe a mile behind us, they were evacuating out of the, up on the top of the mountain over there. We saw some people, UN personnel, just across from the hotel we were there. There's an open space, they landed in there and evacuated personnel. You know, we were uh, about a kilometer from the golf course and we evacuated out of there, so you know. There is a lot of place. Yeah, and, 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 and you know, we have been in touch with uh, other Canadians on the ground there that don't want to be identified uh, because they're fearful mm -hmm. of their safety. And they've been in touch with Global Affairs numerous times. And, and, and basically they're told, just hold it out, uh, hold down the fort, stay wherever you are, and hopefully you have enough food. 
Uh, it, does that <laughs> cut it at this point, or do you think that the Canadian government needs to be doing more in order to get Canadians that are on the ground there in a very dire situation back home? No, it's not cutting it. You know, I get, I can understand. You know, maybe they're just waiting. Okay, the little calm things will calm down. The, the airport open, and they can self evacuate. But this time, like I've been in Haiti several several times before, some six or seven times. The we once in a while we used to have a uh, uh, French. What do they call that? A protest. They they block the roads or whatever. But the airport never closed down. You know. Okay, they, they, they protest for one day, and then the next day we go down to the airport and we take a flight out. That's no problem. But this airport has been closed for the past three weeks, and there is no definite date when it's going to open. So, you know, just government get the act together. I don't know who did this decision. Just evacuate. No. The U.S. is doing it. Why can't Canada get up and do it? We have the means to do it. So just I think there's the political will to get things going. What was it like when you finally were reunited with your wife and daughter? <laughs> it was fantastic. You know, I, my, I didn't know how worried she was. For me, you know, I, we were in a safe compound. We were in a, a house. Usually the house there, they're, they're, they got brick walls, you know, another eight or ten. This house had a ten-foot brick wall around us with barbed wire on top. And it was, you know, uh, we had a little ground to walk on outside. So we felt safe there. And we're off the, the main road. So, you know, if nobody knows we're there, plus we were in Piétonville, which is more or less secure, except for the last day they got attacked, but if nobody knows we're there, we're safe. You know, in the Surf Hotel, when the first time we were in the Surf Hotel, I'm mentioning the name now because I, hopefully everybody's out, but that's just beside the airport. Mm -hmm. And on the first day, there was gunshots, you know, we just got in, we're sitting down having a beer, trying to relax, and these gunshots go off. They weren't aiming at us, they were aiming at the airport. But if they turn around and say, hey, there's a whole bunch of white people in the, this hotel, let's go storm it and grab them for hostage, you know. So we decided to evacuate out of there and to even save her space. But it was just the relief of, you know, I got a full-time job here. And I still got my mortgage to pay. And then that's two weeks, there's no money coming in. So, you know, I can understand, well, people that are maybe dual uh, citizens in, in Haiti, usually they're... Canadian Haitian, they have relations down there, they can stay. I don't know what their financial situation is, but if they're there in the same boat as me, they're going to run out of money. And, you know, you got to get out of there to get back to work. Yeah. And, you know, we, we wish uh, the folks that are down there the very best in getting home. We are glad that you have. Uh, David, appreciate you coming on once again to give us the update on your situation. Glad that you're back with your wife and daughter. Uh, David Rochelot, he is a Canadian who was recently escaped from Haiti.